Good afternoon folks and hello from sunny England. Since most of the video tutorials that I will be recording for my YouTube channel will be performed on my home labs, I thought I would give you a brief tour of the lab I'm going to be using for future videos. As bonus material, I'm going to walk through installing a Linux distro, which I like, and that's called Kali Linux. This OS is used for penetration testing, and if you're a network engineer or a sysadmin interested in penetration testing, Kali Linux is the OS that is typically used for this kind of work. Future videos on Kali Linux are on the way. In the meantime, you can find plenty of learning resources on the Kali Linux website. And this is located at kali.org. Here, there we are. We've got an example on the screen. If you want to follow along with my future videos, you will need CentOS 7, you'll need a hypervisor such as VMware Fusion or VMware Workstation, you'll need Kali Linux, and um, if you can't afford the license costs for VMware, I recommend you either download VirtualBox or alternatively for a uh, less of a learning curve, you can download and install VMware Player. For the advanced labs, you're going to need a F5 Virtual Edition lab license and a trial version of Windows Server 2012. For those of you who don't know F5, uh, you should check out the, lab, the website. It is uh, www.f5.com. Just waiting for the page to load. There we are. Okay, so uh, you can find more information about what F5 is and who they are on the F5.com website. I'm not going to go into that right now. Um, to cut the long story short, the F5 virtual edition lab licenses are roughly $99. And you will get access to all of the F5 software with those lab licenses. Um, essentially, in a nutshell, all you need to know at the moment is F5 is a uh, application delivery controller and it's a full proxy system. For the rest, you're going to look that up because there's going to be some time before we, before we get to those videos. And um, with that in mind, so let's just get started. So as you can see, I am running Mac OS X. Right now the version is El Capitan. I've got 32 gig of memory. This is my host machine. Uh, within this host machine, I've got my virtual machine library. Currently this is being hosted on VMware Fusion Pro. You can see in VMware Fusion Pro right now, I've got uh, three machines that are currently running. So I've got the CentOS 7 machine where I demonstrated the Python video earlier on and I showed you how to install PyCharm and how to configure PyCharm virtual environments. I've also got a Windows Server 2012 machine, uh, which is just there. And I'm also running an F5 Big IP. Using my VMware hypervisor, I have created a virtual network consisting of several subnets that allow my virtual machines to communicate with each other. With the exception of my CentOS machine and the future Kali Linux machine we are installing in this video, all of my virtual machines are completely isolated from the outside world and cannot route any packets to the internet. The virtual machines are able to communicate with each other as I place them in the appropriate layer 3 subnets and layer 2 broadcast domains and have the appropriate routing in place for that to happen. There are two main steps required to create a virtual network in your VMware hypervisor. I will show you the steps for doing this in VMware Fusion as this is what I am running at the moment. These steps are the same in VMware Workstation and VMware Player. The interface is just slightly different. I also seem to remember that the concept is the same in VirtualBox. That being said, go to VMware Preferences, Network tab, unlock the padlock. You will need your admin password. The default is for VMware Fusion to automatically assign a IP to your virtual machine via DHCP. 
but this does not prevent you from using a static IP. In fact, you should be configuring static IPs for your VMware guests unless you have a good reason not to. Once your network is created, a virtual interface is also created on your host subsystem. This is required if you still want your virtual machines to speak with each other across subnets. You don't need to perform any further steps. As you can see, my configuration is a little bit crazy as I was playing with GNS3 a few months ago, and I have around 100 virtual networks available to me on my system. There is actually no limit to this. Just remember, I am lucky enough to have a reasonably big system for what I am doing. So, when I say there is no limit to this, I am actually lying. It depends on your system resources. Remember, I have 32 gig of RAM. I am running a pretty decent processor and I've got pretty big storage as well. Not that the storage really matters in this instance. Of course, I'm running multiple VMware machines, but that doesn't matter at this point. Before we move on, please note this setting, require authentication to enter promiscuous mode. I like to uncheck this as it saves me getting prompted for a password every time the machine boots up. Now here are some instructions to install Kali Linux version 2. For your benefit, I am including instructions on the screen which should get you through your Kali Linux setup. I will not be speaking during this part of the video. The installation process should take you around 30 minutes to complete. 